Hello again and welcome. This is Robert Shine, Managing Director and Partner of Blanky Shine Wealth Management. Today is Thursday, the 4th of February, and it's 2021. Let's get to our topics of the day. You're going to learn something today. I hope you're ready, so thanks for watching. As we discuss our topics uh, here at Blanky Shine Wealth Management and share with you what we're thinking about, what we have on our dashboard as we asset allocate our clients' investments on a discretionary basis and manage portfolios, if you will, and ultimately just take advantage of what markets um, have to offer uh, with the embedded volatility, right? Uh, you, you do realize, and if you don't, this is a good fact to, to keep in mind, that the S&P 500 on an annual basis drops at least three times by two fives and a 10. So it's not uncommon for the market to pull back by a 5% a couple of times in one calendar year and a 10% in a calendar year. Last year, we had a 20% pullback last March in a calendar year. Uh, you know, the market dropped, uh, you know, but just about 40% in 23 trading days. So volatility would provide opportunity. And at the end of the day, we want to look at the fundamentals of the U.S. economy and see if we have uh, sort of a, a, a all clear basis as, in terms of the next three, six, 12 months in, in long term as we're long term focused here for our clients of Blanky Shine Wealth Management. But we use the short term volatility and the short term pullbacks, as I just described, as taking advantage of good quality companies at a great value. And we own them because these management teams can navigate through volatile markets, through changing dynamics in their business, as well as the global environment, right? Changes um, that we see on a daily basis, as well as policy makers. We know that policy is going to change on a go forward basis in Congress. So great management teams can navigate through that with the efficiencies of how they manage their business and still uh, make their company uh, profitable. But let's go to the where we were a year ago right now as it relates to the jobs. Our January report for jobs shows two months in a row trending in the right direction, meaning jobs, jo initial jobless claims came in under than what was expected by economists. So that's a two month trend. Uh, it's a positive trend. But if we look at last year at this time, so if I go back to February of 2020, we had a roaring economy. Unemployment was at a 50 year low, sub 4%. So here, what I put down, is the job market was at a 3% unemployment rate for the US economy, which is again, it, you know, it was about three, three and a half percent, I believe, at that time a year ago. Uh, ultimately, what that means is if you wanted a job and you're looking, we had a healthy, robust economy, and ultimately there's upward mobility, meaning if you wanted a better job, there is a strong job market to provide just that. And that really rises all uh, economic levels, all, uh, um, at, you know, all demographic levels across the United States. That's, that's why it's so important. That's why the Federal Reserve is focused on that so gratefully because, or so, so intently because they need that unemployment rate to help all broad subsections of the economy. But we were down to 3%. But what does that mean on the other side? That means that 97% of Americans last year had employment. Fast forward to tw this month, uh, you know, year over year right now, and we're just over a 6% unemployment rate. Now, we're not perfect, right? And, and the economy's got a lot to go, a lot further to go to help those travel, leisure, uh, hospitality industry, and all the subsectors of the small business owners that have been wiped out, especially in the restaurant industry as well. But we're at a 6%. Flip that around, we're still at a 94% employment in the economy. Now, it's not perfect right now. There's a lot, long way to go, and Congress is going to meet uh, actually, they are right now in, in talks with the new administration as to how they can help uh, those that need help of this subsector, let's call it 6 to 10 percent of the economy, because there's always a shadow number of unemployment that's really not looking uh, or even reported. But let's call it a 10 percent uh, just to cover, encompass everybody that needs help right now in this economy. So that's why the Federal Reserve, as well as fiscal policy, monetary policy, are working together to help this subsection of the economy. Now, if we go to how is the economy doing right now? Again, I talked about global PMI. All G7 com uh, countries are coming in better than expected, above 50% on a PMI read. Uh, and a P purchasing manager index is an indication, a forward indication, leading indicator as to if the economy is growing or contracting. And above a 50 uh, on that number by any economy or any country, if you will, shows that their economy is in expansion mode versus contraction mode. If you're under 50, you're contracting. So all G7 countries right now are in expansion mode. Uh, and we came in in January as a 58.7, which is well above the 50 mark. We are well uh, uh, heating up in terms of the US economy right now. If we look inside the report, the price index, that shows all 18 indices 
uh, industries within raw materials, uh, capital goods, we're talking commodities, all 18 are up. That's tremendous. So the strength, the underlying strength of the US economy is there. That's why markets are up, stock market is up. Also personal spending. Right now we have over a trillion, could grow to three trillion at some point in time over the next couple of years, but a trillion plus in bank accounts, personal savings accounts right now. Why? Because people aren't moving around and they're not spending. So that money is you know sitting in the bank. And I, as you know, if you follow me at any point in time, we brought in more money from banks last year with all of our clients, uh, you know, putting it to work because the bank is not paying you anything right now. In fact, they're making money on our deposits. So obviously keep your six month reserves in cash and keep enough liquidity that you're comfortable with. But if you need to you know, uh, basically put that money to work, give us a call, we're happy to help you because the banks are sitting on $1 trillion of your assets and they're making money and you're not. But that personal savings rate is the highest it's ever been. So that's tremendously sort of a good underpinning of the US economy that consumers have money. And finally, personal spending. So this is where it gets really interesting. So the personal spending, and this has just been reported, uh, for the low income households, as, as it's been classified, 17.1% increase in spending in the low income households. High income households, everyone at home that I'm talking to most likely, our clients specifically, uh, uh, savings, right? Is, is, or excuse me, uh, savings is up and income is down in terms of uh, spending. So high income earners, uh, everyone's saving, right? They're not traveling, they're not uh, doing the things they normally do when you're retired. And so your savings, uh, your spending, excuse me, is down. I see that on a daily, as I talk to my clients on a daily basis, this is tremendous. So they're sending us the money and say, what can we do with it? And I said, well, listen, if that money is set aside for travel for 2022, 2023, we can redeploy that just for some fun money. Think about this, we buy some travel related uh, under beat up stocks, right? Undervalued beat up stocks and say, hey, listen, put that there. And and, you know, when you think it's uh, and feel better, you get your vaccine and it's safe to travel again, and it's all, 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 all uh, you know, steam ahead. By the time you actually cash that out and put that into, uh, you know, buying your cruise ship and your airline tickets, you probably will have a free vacation based upon where those uh, stocks are priced right now in terms of such a deep discount. Uh, those companies are going, going to survive. They're not gonna go out of business for the most part, the ones that we're looking at. And for, for, for just for fun, a little small percentage of your portfolio, you know, it, when you guys you know, start traveling again, you could actually uh, have a free vacation on sort of the smart money decisions that we can make for you. So let's have those fun conversations, but uh, more importantly, and decide if it's right for you, because it's not right for everybody, that's my disclaimer. But, but more importantly, we look at the economy, the economy is getting better for jobs. And again, keep in mind, jobs don't have to get down to 3%. Uh, a 3% unemployment rate uh, for the uh, economy continue to grow and continue for the uh, stock market to continue to grow higher. Uh, that's just a function of the way economy sheds sort of the excess, if you will, and becomes more efficient, more profitable. So don't don't take the headlines into consideration. Say, oh gosh, you know, U.S. unemployment rate so high, I'm worried I shouldn't invest. There's a huge disconnect, and there's a lot of market research to re to report. Don't use that. That's a that's a lagging indicator. The leading indicator is, is the economy strong. Not only US economy, but around the world, it's heating up. So that's the one you wanna pay attention to. Personal savings, this money will work its way out. And when it does, that's a backdrop to help increase this number. So that's sort of a trip around the world, if you will. We're looking at the PMI in the US, which is heating up. We're looking at the jobs and how it relates. Uh, again, Congress is gonna to come to the aid of those that are still unemployed and need uh, more assistance, which we believe that that does absolutely need to happen, but more of an targeted fashion, more of in a thoughtful fashion, but the, the worst thing they can do is wait. So they have to sort of work, work quickly, work nights and weekends and work for the American people. So that's our update today. Thanks for watching and we'll check in again next time. Take care.